The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program depending on their content. You can earn continuing education credits through ACI's online CEU program. Visit www.concrete.org to register. ACI conventions provide an opportunity for networking and for keeping up to date with the latest in concrete technology and practices. Our next speaker is uh, Gary Knight from Lehigh. Um, he is going to talk about limestone cements. There has been quite a bit of talk on limestone cements. You're going to hear one more on limestone cements this afternoon. So make sure that you attend the afternoon one too. Thank you. All yours, Gary. Thank you. Um, okay. What I'm going to talk about is uh, I'm, I work for Lehigh Hanson in Atlanta and and in the Atlanta area, we have uh, a good assortment of cement companies. And we have Argos, Wholesome, Boozy, Lehigh, Semex, and National are the dominant or very have a strong presence in the southeast. And in an effort to um, promote limestone cements, we approached the DOT and we said, what would you like us to do to show you that the limestone cements work? And they came back with some ideas, and, and we decided to, um, they decided that we would like to have some of this work done at uh, Georgia Tech. And so we approached Georgia Tech, and, and we were going to have some, we came up with a, a testing scheme, and um, unfortunately the funding fell through. So what we did is we pulled together, and we um, did our testing at, at the Heidelberg Technology Center, and so what I'm going to do is, is go through the results of that testing. Um, in, in our area, we have um, what's the cements that are available. If we have the type 1, type 2, type 3, type 5 is available. Uh, 1150, 1157 GU is available. Uh, and type HE is available. Uh, and so now with the 595 1L cements, that, that limestone cement will now also be available. So, um, the, like I said, the original plan was to give the DOT some information and also come up with some information that we could go back to our customers and use. Um, so, each of the companies uh, involved submitted uh, their standard Portland cement as well as their 595 1L cement. And so, each company submitted two cement samples, um, and we did all the testing at the Heidelberg Technology Lab. I can say that um, I could never pull this off today under today's climate uh, because it took quite a few resources to do this at the lab. So, um, <clears throat> so what we did is we had six cement companies and five different companies submitted samples, and. Um, so we collected the C-150, the 595 1L, and what we did is we approached the local lab and we said, when we did the testing, we didn't want to know whose cement we were testing. So we went to uh, a lab called TEC Services in Atlanta, and we asked them to, to relabel the cements to, so we would be do blind testing. And so I'm assured that the cement A does not stand for Argos, and cement B does not stand for boozy, okay? And cement C doesn't stand for semex, okay? So you can't make that assumption, all right? So it's completely blind testing here. Uh -huh. So the testing outline uh, was to do the traditional slump, air, density, temperature, initial set time, final set time, calculate the relative yield of the mixes to make sure that we were getting what we wanted, that our, our batch yielded properly. And then our compressive testing, we did 1, 3, 7, 28, 56 day, okay? Three cylinders each. Um, we did RCP testing, and we did some shrinkage testing, C157. 
and you'll see down here where it says modified Alabama spec. That means that we, in the shrinkage testing, uh, instead of curing for 28 days, which is what is in the spec, we only cured for seven, which is more realistic as to what goes on in the field. In many states, many engineers now do that modified uh, shrinkage test, so that's how we did the testing. Um, in the concrete mixes, we tested um, straight C-150, uh, straight 5951L, and C-150 with F-ash, and our mixes were 75% cement, 25% ash. Um, we, we originally wanted to tailor these to, to meet the DOT in Georgia, but they only allow 15% ash, and we felt that was not really realistic, that the, the majority of people that use ash use 25%, so we varied there, and we increased the amount of ash up to 25%. I think it speaks well of the cement companies promoting the use of more ash, by the way. Okay. Um, so we have um, C-150 and the C-ash and slag, and then we repeated everything with the 595 and F, 595 and C, and 595 slag cement. So um, <clears throat> how we came up with the five cements is it was very basic. We tested Monday, we did cement A, Tuesday we did cement B, uh, Wednesday we did cement C, Thursday we did D and E, so that's how we came up with five, see. Um, and the thing that we have to, um, and I need to point out here, is that we were testing company A cement, the C-150, to their 595-1L. We're not testing company A to company B. We're not comparing cement company to cement company. We are comparing... What a, what a cement company would give you a, an ordinary, ordinary Portland cement, and if, you, and if you were to buy the limestone cement, the 595 1L, how would that perform relative to their standard Portland? Okay? We're not comparing cement A to B to C to D. Okay? Understand the difference? Okay? So, so in total, we had 40 mixes. That's a, that's a fair number of mixes. Okay? Um, the collection of data, we were going to collect concrete data, we collected chemistry data, and we did JIP phase, we did PSD, and we will, we'll go through this in the next phase. Okay. So, if you're a cement head, you, you, this becomes a very interesting page. Um, so, on the left here are the chemistries for my C-150 cements. And on the right, uh, my chemistries for my 595-1L cements. And you can see A, B, C, D, and E, A, B, C, D, and E. And so, first thing that's of interest is we hear a lot about fineness and blame. And if you look at the blame of the Portland cements, you can see that you have a 397, a 349, a 414, 413, 416. And that all the blames for the limestone cements are higher because you've heard that we need to grind the cement finer in order to, to get the reactivity, okay? Uh, it's interesting to note that, you know, these are just, these cements represent traditional modern cements. So the majority of your cements are now having blends most of the time, three quarters of the time, over 400. So we're at that 400 mark at the traditional cements now to get the reactivity that people want out of just OPC. Uh, if you come down to the air jet or the 45 micron passing, it's a little bit different. Here you can see a relatively jump in blame, but if you look at what passes the 45 micron, here we have, you have 95, 96, 98, 91, 97, and if you look at the 595, you're at 98, 98, 98, 91, 97. So you can see that, you know, the, the, the passing the 45 micron is a slightly better indicator of, of where the finenesses are, okay? All right, because cause the plane has a, um, gives you a little bit of, not erroneous, but it, it, there's a lot of very fine particles of limestone in there, okay? And you can see that, like, if, if for the cement C, with the um, a blend of 414, you have uh, passing the four, passing the 45 micron sieve, you have like 98 percent passing. And if you go over to the corresponding one, you have like it's, you're still at 98. See, so it's, it's very interesting to look at the, the 45. What's passing the 45 micron? Okay. 
SO3. SO3. In ASTM C150, it says that you have to be below 3 is a maximum. Uh, it's interesting to note that the majority of cements today have SO3s higher than 3. And what that invokes is that you have to do the 1038 to make sure you don't have any undue expansion. Okay. So only one cement had a SO3 less than 3. So it's very common to see SO3s above 3.0. Okay. Um, and you can see that the SO3s in the, in the limestone cements are a tad higher, is a little bit higher. Okay. Um, it's interesting to note, I think, that if you look at C150, and if you look at the requirements of the different types of cement, type 3 cement requires a one-day one cube break of 1700, 1740. And I can tell you that all these cements have one-day cube strengths of, of well over 2,000, 2,200, 2,300, 2,400, and that the three days are well over 3,500. So all your typical cements today in this region are really meet the type 3 requirement. And if you look at the SO3 requirement for type 3s, they allow you to go to 3.5. So you can see that's why you have to have more SO3 in there to, to balance that fineness, that, that high, high early strength. Okay. Well, at least that seems to be the trend. Um, so the same thing here is only one cement here has, well, there's another one here. So it's not, it's not too surprising to see the SO3s go above 3. Okay. And if we come down here to LOI, um, in C150 you want to stay below 3. And in, and in the 595, you need to be below, you need to be below 10. And so this gives you an indication. The reason this LOI is higher is because of the ground limestone, right? The limestone gives gives you the higher loss. Okay. So some interesting comparisons here. To if you look at this, as to say, this is what modern cements look like. This is what the 595 cements will look like. Okay. Um, total alkalis. In the south, many of our cements are low alkali cements, below 0.6, and you can see that here. Um, just as a trend, uh, the 595s are all lower in alkali because if you put more limestone in, your percentage automatically decreases, okay? So that's a natural thing to expect, okay? But again, if the, if the cement plant makes a basic low alkali cement, the limestone cement will also be correspondingly low alkali. And here we have, um, when you calculate the percent limestone in the cement, these numbers up here are the purity of the limestone. These numbers were given to us by the different cement plants. And so our Portland limestone cements had anything from 4.6, 3.7, 1.1, 3.4, 2.7 are the average amounts of limestones in the OPCs. And then on the limestone cements, we had everything from a high of 16, which is 1% above what is allowed, and to a low of 6.2. So we had a very nice range for our testing. Okay, five more minutes. And down here we did, uh, I had them do the JIP phases. This is always very interesting. Um, there are some rules of thumb here. The um, percent, um, like hemihydrate, the gypsum you usually want as a, a, a either a one-to-one -one, between a one-to-one -one and a two-to-one ratio, just as traditional cements. Um, this kind of information is good if you're trying to, s to look at problems in, in concrete for ad admixtures and things. So we just wanted to make sure that we could fingerprint what the gyp phase was on, on the two cements. Okay. So here's some information um, put together. This is a Tim Koss slide. So here are some slides. Um, uh, this is uh, li percent limestone, and with the OPC, the Portland limestone cement, and the blains, you can see how they, they relate together. Uh, and let's talk about the fineness. This is very interesting to compare the finenesses. So here, here's particle size distribution, and you can see in almost in every case the limestone cements are a tad finer. The mean particle size is always ground fine. Okay. We need to do that in order to get the reactivity. Another rule of thumb for cement plants making limestone cements is that if you take your 
one day cube strength for a Portland cement, what you want to do is have two or three hundred psi more for the corresponding limestone cement. So you want to bump up the one days just a little bit. And then that would give you a pretty much equivalent performance in concrete. Okay. But you can see some of these track, there are differences in some. So each one of these is a different cement plant. Okay. So some of, the, some of the cements track very close, some are a little bit different. So you can see that this is quite a bit finer here than the one over here. So here's the results, here are the results. Um, if you look at cement A, this is, here's our five cements, and this is just the straight 595 compared to its corresponding PLC. So that's pretty equivalent performance right there, right? That's very, very similar. It is very similar for cement B. Slight difference here, and, and this is the, the the red is the port, the limestone cement, by the way. Okay. Uh, again, very similar performance. Very similar performance. Uh, in this testing, you can see that in, in the boxes below, the, the slumps were all held. And everything was done at a ver constant slump for all this testing. Okay. And we vary the water cement ratio just as you would at a ready mix plant or a precast plant. So we held the workability similar, similar workability. So our slumps varied no more than three quarters of an inch in all this testing. It's very tightly controlled. Okay. So straight cement, this is what it looks like with fly ash. Okay. A little bit of difference here. Very, very similar. A little bit of difference here. I mean, that's all within the, 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 the variation of testing, okay? So it's very, very similar performance. Sea okay. ash. Okay. Very similar, it's a very similar performance, okay? This is what we're shooting for, is equivalent performance. Here's with slag. Okay. Picture stays is very constant, very similar performance. This is the same data, but on here you can see here are your set times. Okay? The, um, the round circle is the Portland limestone, and the diamond is the OPC. You can see that you have very similar set times in most cases. Very similar. This one's a little different. Okay? That one's a little different. But overall, you get very, very similar set times. The set times aren't different enough to make a difference. Again, this is just comparing the uh, averages of each category. Again, with, with uh, these are the straight cements, the sea ashes, the OPCs, the limestones. Here's your three, seven, twenty. This is the average of all, all of them averaged together. Okay. Interesting data here is um, RCP data. Um, it's very interesting to see that the um, in this case, the limestone cement ha had a higher RCP value than the standard o OPC. But what's really interesting is as soon as you add, use the limestone cements with a, a fly ash or slag, you get improved RCP numbers right here. Right? So limestone cements really like fly ashes and slags. They like cementitious materials. Okay. And shrinkage. Here's our shrinkage data over here. And here, I don't know if you can see, in, in, in this case here, this is the OPC. That's the Portland Limestone Cement. And the one on, I don't know if it shows up that well over here, but the one, the PLC is always to the right. So that's the PLC here, and that's the OPC. Okay. But the thing to take away here is that the, differences, the difference between using a Portland Cement and a Limestone Cement, there's very little difference between those between uh, 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 that cement, you get much more difference when you change cement companies. So the variation in cements is greater from company A to company B to company C than it is between an OPC from the same company and a limestone cement from the same company. Okay? It's, there's no great difference here. And of course the range we did a, a six to we had a very nice range. This ended up being a, a, a mistake that worked in our favor. That we had one low because the target was to have a 10, 12% limestone, but one came in at 6, and we had one at 16, so it ended up having a very nice bracketed testing. So 
Um, the, o the Portland limestone cements perform almost identical to OPCs, um, and it's through a very a good variety of limestone contents. Um, the thing is, is, is that you get if you look if if you're worried about variability, you, there's more variability from uh, changing from one cement company to another cement company than there is from changing from within going from an OPC from Lehigh or Wholesome than it is to go to a limestone cement. Okay. And these are the folks that were involved. We had kind of a group effort here from Argos, Bougie, Cement, Wholesome, Lehigh, National. We all we all came together. I need to give Tim Cost uh, credit for helping to put me putting together some of the slides. The ones you can't understand are the ones that he put together, by the way. So anyway, no, I don't know if he's here, um, but he was a great help. Um, Tim has also put this, these findings in a paper that will be published shortly. So this, this, will, this, this work that we did in Georgia will be published, uh, which is a great thing because I think the testing is very, very, we were very pleased with the results of the testing. And uh, this is an example of a, a limestone project that I spoke about yesterday. This is a silo at the Leeds uh, cement plant outside of Birmingham, and we located a creek. All this, all this here is done with Portland limestone cement and 40% slag. All this is done with a 52% clinker replacement factor. 52% of the Portland cement was replaced with cementitious, with either limestone and, and slag. Okay, and this is the the inside of this right here is what, what what's going on inside of that silo right here. Um, this is 26,000 yards of limestone cement. 26,000 yards. This is 5,000 yards. Okay. And the other thing, all the paving at the plant was done with um, the same basic mix, 40% slag and, and, and limestone cement. And to date, we've had 4,700 trucks go over that pavement, and we've seen no problems with the pavement. So, any questions? This shows you that the limestone cements can work. Don't be afraid of using the limestone cements. Okay. Ted, you're going to give me a question. Uh, yes, you were supposed to heckle me. Oh, yeah. Yes. The, the silos, I guess, uh, that's slip form, right? Yes. I spoke about that yesterday. I don't know if you were there, but that was a, a very nice project. Uh, there was a lot of mixed design development. Uh, that concrete is not... It's not designed for strength, it's designed to be slipped, if you know what I'm saying. So you look for properties, it's, you know, you, you end up with concrete that is a, in excess of what you need for structural. You end up, what you do is you design that concrete to be stiff enough to support the slip form. And, and we did that. We did that with a combination of 40% slag. Uh, the limestone cement for that was, it was really a fine grind, would be considered an 1157 high early. Okay. And so we had a high early limestone cement, and we had a 40% slag to kind of tone that down, and then we had an admixture package that allowed us to vary the set times and everything. It was a great project. Okay. Thank you, guys. Yep.